quote Second Peter 3. This text is clearly dominated by language of judgment and destruction, which I've highlighted on the slide, but I've left out one word. It's a verb. I won't tell you what it is yet. I just put a blank space there. And I want you to think about what verb jumps to your mind that would fit at this point. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything in it will be something. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire. And the elements will melt in the heat. So you might expect something like the earth and what's in it will be destroyed or, be, or vanish or be consumed. And indeed, the King James Version specifically says it will be burned up. But the NIV says it will be laid bare. And if you like the ESV, it says it will be exposed. And if you're into the NRSV, it says it will be disclosed. Those are the basic translation options you find in most modern translations. Note the contrast. Will the earth be destroyed or uncovered by God's judgment? So what's going on here? It turns out that the What the NIV and all later English translations, with one exception, which I won't mention, uh, do, is that they are not translating a Greek word differently. They're translating an entirely different Greek word from the New Testament. The King James Version translates this word, this verb, katathesatai, which means burned up. But the NIV and all the others translate the verb, hurasthesatai, which means literally found. The earth and all its works will be found after the judgment. In other words, this is a matter of what biblical scholars call textual criticism. We have many manuscripts of the New Testament, and what we try to find out are which are the oldest and most reliable, the closest to the originals. So the question arises because scribal errors often occur as scribes working by candlelight are copying texts, and some scribes change a word here or there to make it fit. Because they don't think that word could have been right. Some scribe miscopied it before. And somebody took the word hurathesotai and said, no, the text is about destruction. Let's copy it to mean burned up. And change just the preface to the word, the prefix to the word. The translators of the King James Version, we can excuse them. They were translating inferior Greek manuscripts that they knew about 400 years ago in the 16th century. But since the 18th century on, biblical scholars have known that the oldest and most reliable Greek manuscripts of the Bible have this other word, found, and not burned up. And yet, until the NIV in the 1970s, all English translations still translated the word katathesotai, burned up. Why? Well, isn't it obvious? We all know that God's going to destroy the world and take us to heaven, right? We know that. That's a basic assumption. This world is a wrecked vessel. So that must be the correct word, even though it goes against what we know about the most ancient manuscripts. So the translators, aided and abetted by a dualistic worldview, which devalued earthly life, and just assumed an otherworldly destiny for human beings in their redemption, allowed the tenor of judgment in 2 Peter 3 to overwhelm what they knew was the right word. And don't we, when we experience difficult times and sufferings, sometimes we cannot even see the redemption that's possible. We get trapped into the negativity. That's what happened to them. So while 2 Peter 3 clearly speaks of judgment and even destruction, using the image of a fire, a cosmic conflagration, it does not describe the destruction of creation, but the destruction of sin, which cleanses and purifies creation. The image is of the smelting of metal, where the dross is burned off, so the pure metal may be revealed or found. And interestingly, the place where you smell met, smelt and melt metals is called a foundry. Did you know that? The same word found occurs a few verses later, in verse 14, in reference to human salvation. That after the judgment, Peter says, we hope that we, the righteous, shall be found and not destroyed. Because Peter actually says, the judgment comes to destroy the godless, but the righteous will be found. So, what is the saving activity of God described as in this passage? It is described as finding, or disclosing, or uncovering, with the earth and everything in it, designated as the object of God's saving activity. 
by the end of verse 13, Peter makes an even bigger claim. See, verse 10 refers to the cleansing of the earth. But now in verse 13, Peter names what he's really looking forward to, a new cosmos. God's saving activity is described at the end of this passage as renewal or making new, and it's applied to the heaven and the earth. The entire created universe will finally be characterized not by sin, but by righteousness. 